As of late, life has been pretty chaotic. I haven't been feeling myself. I've been getting sick on and off. My emotional state hasn't been what it should be. And then it leads me to believe, can I keep on making videos? Should I keep on making videos? And uh, yeah, welcome back to Bourdain. Everybody should know how to use a knife. Use everything, waste nothing. Let's start at the beginning. It ain't that hard, okay? My name is Mitch May. You are getting all of 60% of me today. We are working through Anthony Bourdain's Lael Cookbook, working through every freaking recipe. And it's come to my attention, some people don't know the king, Anthony Bourdain. He's a dude who was an executive chef at a French bistro. He did the time in restaurants. His main claim to fame was his travel series where he went across the world trying everything. And he also knew the underbelly of the culinary industry where he wrote a phenomenal book, Kitchen Confidential. If you've never heard of him? Get out of here. And then come back after you've seen some of his stuff. Regardless, Faux filet au beurre rouge. We're going up a steak for the first time and we're making a delicious red wine butter, which Bourdain says can go on about just anything. Now, one thing I am not crazy about is how Bourdain says to cook the steaks. Basically says, pop them on the grill and cook them until they're done. That is a problem because I don't really know how to work with a grill. As you can see, my apron is gone. I don't know what happened to it. Probably because my sister and her boyfriend and me all used three at the same time for a video. All right, first things first, we're going to make our butter. Over to the stove. In a small pot, combine half a cup of red wine. Woo, that was a little hot, huh? And one thinly sliced shallot and bring to a boil over a high heat. Reducing that mixture, it's getting close. Wanna make sure we don't burn those shallots. Yeah, boop, 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 boop. What's up? All right, that looks good to me. There's still a little liquid in there, but very little. We're gonna dump this off into our mixing bowl and allow it to cool. It certainly smells heavenly. And now we bring out the lovely food processor. I think everybody has a love-hate relationship with these things. They're so hard to clean. The fun part is taking our Rubik's Cube-like gadgets. This. I'm gonna take our butter. No, I do always use unsalted butter, every single recipe, mainly because I want to season things and learn how to taste and season myself. And we get some finely chopped parsley. Bourdain calls for a sprig of parsley chopped. This is three sprigs. Salt and pepper to taste. And I am gonna use some white pepper, just cause I wanna keep that color there. Red wine mixed to in he, which is warm, yes, but let's just see what happens. Let's see how dramatically it can f this up if he doesn't let the red wine shallot mixture cool down. <laughs> Where's the lid, Mitch? Put the balls on. Now we mix. I have to say, if you want to buy a food processor, this is the one to get. Let me show you a little top-down view. It's coming along, it's getting there. Give this a little love around the sides. Okay, moment of truth. Let's give a little flavor test. Salty. I want to season things and learn how to taste and season myself. Taste and season myself. Some nice flavor in there. I almost kind of want more wine flavor. But let's get this off into our mixing bowl. Now this part gets a little fun. Roll this into a log. This is actually gonna be fun because I never did this before. I didn't even look up like a little YouTube tutorial. It's gonna be an inch, so we're gonna get a smack dab in the middle. I like how Bourdain says roll this like a joint. <laughs> or a nori roll. Get it relatively uniform. And now let's try to roll this thing, huh? Keeping it nice and tight. Not too sure how to go about it. And just kind of twist up the sides, roll up these sides opposite each other. There we have it. Not the best, a little ununiform. Some weakness in our casing there. We're gonna let this solidify in our fridge and let's bring out our steaks. New York strip. Steaks. Badoop bop B. Bourdain calls for us to let this sit out for about 10 minutes. That's basically the <laughs> prep. With the grill, I'm gonna do some asparagus and a little avocado oil. Pepper and salt. Give it some love. Those look nice. And then also, these are gonna go on the grill as is. So, there we go. Let's go outside and you can see my grill, which I've never touched. It's a fickle lock. It is. Bring out the almighty grill. It's had better days but it does what it needs to do, which is cook things. Turn on these burners, hi, hi, and ignite. I think this is just a little too carbonized. Let that hang out until it comes up to temperature, I'm assuming. Okay, I think we give these a nice pat down. The grill is on an uneven surface, which I'm realizing probably sucks. 
We have some artificial grill marks already. Hit them with some oil. Bourdain says to use a brush. I like touching things with my hands. Interpret that how you want it to. This is avocado oil. I didn't want to use olive oil because that really burns and releases a lot of nasty stuff at high temperatures. Granted, we're at such a high temp, this avocado oil might release a lot of that. We'll see. Hit this with our salt. Again, another thing I'm flying in the face of Bourdain with, I'm not adding pepper. I think that's gonna burn as well. The fun part begins. Ooh, the smell is heavenly, I have to say. Beautiful day. Let them vibe out there on that high, high heat. Curl out like 30 seconds. I'm not crazy about getting that crazy commercial hash mark, but if we get that, so be it. The left burner, kind of warmer-ish. In about 30 seconds, it's gonna give this a flip. It's a little stuck to our grate, that's okay. Pretty nice color there, actually. Pretty nice color. I'm gonna baste it with a little butter and we're gonna mess around with flipping these on and off, trying to get that nice caramelization color. Give it a flipper. It's gonna utilize that side of the grill. I'm not crazy about how we had some stuff sticking to the grate. And at this point, I'm going to pop the shallots on. It's been about another 30 seconds. Terrible hash marks. If I wanted to get hash marks, uh, I would have to do it this way. Yeah, I would have to do it this way. We're starting to achieve some nice caramelization there. And this is basically our last flip. After this, I'm thinking we push these off to the cooler side of the grill. I'm really disappointed with the uh, browning we got, but uh, you know, it looks okay. Take a quick temperature, 125-ish. I heard 135 is what you should shoot for. Slide them off over to our cooling, cooled-ish side. Now we're just gonna slide our asparagus on there, which I'm imagining is gonna cook very, 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 very quickly. Close that up, let it hang out one or two minutes and check that temperature for 135. If I get 135, I'm chilling. Great time for a comment of the week from Timinator. He commented on my liver video a while back, but he also told me about how cheese was basically invented with the taking of milk and storing it in animal stomachs and the enzymes in the stomachs created cheese. An amazing little fact. But we are about to play. If you're into these kind of vibes, just hanging out, learning how to cook, I am going to be doing more with this channel with a little bit of travel possibly here or there. If you enjoy these videos, think about subscribing, think about joining my journey. And uh, it's really enjoyable for me to create these things. Steaks, I'd say, are done. Didn't necessarily get that nice caramelization I was looking for, but I'll let those hang out. The shallots, they need a little more time. The grass, I love saying grass. My old manager used to call asparagus grass, and I feel like, so, ooh, ooh, it's a little over. It's a little over. There's definitely a hot spot on my grill. Close this up. Let's go back into the kitchen. Color, I'm actually pretty happy with. Get some of that steak butter on there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That is cake ass. Granted, I can't taste super great. We didn't really render out that fat cap. I would have liked to get that nice and caramelized. The grill is an enigma for me currently. I think the biggest thing is regulating that temperature because once you pop it open, everything just plummets. Once I started hitting like 132, I pulled it because I know it cooks a little bit off the heat. If you got tips for the grill for me, fire away. I'm about to actually cook another recipe, snails for round two. The second time we're making them, the video will be right here if you're interested. Thank you for spending your time with me. This was another one down. We're moving through these things. So back to Bourdain. Stay organized and clean up after yourself. You do the best you can. Mm-hmm.